What's up everybody? I'm gonna be trying something new on the channel. I know it's been a while since I've posted, but uh, I decided the other day or had an idea the other day that I could start doing analyses of matches, even though I haven't posted my seven steps to a wrestling match video yet. I wanted to do that first and then start doing these because then you know, you'll know what the steps are when I refer to them. But I just haven't gotten around to it. I recorded like half of it. So I've got like like maybe 45, 50 minutes of it. And then uh, and then the camera stopped because my phone didn't have enough memory. So, But I finished the whole thing. And then I, I realized afterward that I had only recorded like the first four steps, five steps. But anyway, I'll be getting back to that and finishing that soon. But I wanted to start doing these analyses of these matches because... I love talking about this kind of stuff, so I wanted to share my knowledge. I'm gonna do Black Tiger 2 versus Takamichi Noku. I'll be going over, uh, you know, the technical breakdown of what's going on in the ring, what steps they're on, how I can tell. So here we go. Alright. Yeah, so the match started. Let's see, the match starts with, we're gonna go with step one here. Step one is skipped. So step one, they would have come out and established who's the face and who's the heel, just by the way they walk out and the way you interact with the crowd. For instance, the heel takes their time and a face is more like high energy. They don't really take their time unless like it makes sense. But if they're just coming out, you don't know who they are. Like if it's a brand new, say you're wrestling because, you know, these videos are for professional wrestlers or aspiring professional wrestlers. So I'm either speaking to fellow professional wrestlers and you can relate with me on what I'm about to say. Or you can be like, no, you're completely fucking wrong, dude. Or if you're learning, well, this is just another perspective to help you on your journey. Good luck, by the way. So in the beginning, when if you're wrestling and nobody knows who you are, and you're the face, you're most likely going to come out more high energy. You know, you're going to be happy. You're going to be clapping, tagging hands, or you're going to be capturing something that the, the crowd just wants to express and you're doing it for them. You represent the crowd. So typically though, a face, if you go to like a, a local show and it's the curtain raiser and the first guy that comes out is probably going to be the face. Uh, and it's a new guy that's never wrestled before. Like, it's his first match, let's say. First, one of his first few matches. And you're just there. Nobody knows who he is. So he comes out. He's most likely about to come out high energy and like, hey, and yeah. And clapping and tagging hands and, you know, kissing babies, all that, all that jazz. And then the heel would come out and completely not care about anybody and be all about himself. Anyway, so they didn't do that. Uh... Here, it looks like the match is already starting. They're already in the ring. I'm assuming that Black Tiger, in Japan, they do a lot of stuff based on nationality. They're very national, nationally proud. So I'm assuming Taka is the favorite. So I'm going to treat him like the face. But here we go. I'm going to play the match. All right. So they're in step two now, which is the shine. So whoever's the face, if they're going by traditional... The tr traditional model, the face is about to out-wrestle the heel. But maybe not. I might have missed it. There might have been a cutoff there. I didn't see if Taka got the first move. Hold on, let me rewind it. Because I'm assuming Black Tiger is the heel. Sometimes they also just skip the shine. That's If you had to take out one step, that's the quickest one you could take out. Yeah, so no. So it looks like Black Tiger gets the upper hand first. Then he comes back, yep. He out, he's out wrestling them, basically. So he's the face based on who's out wrestling who, but then that was a dirty tactic right there. So that makes me think he's a heel. And like I said, Taka is the is their fellow countryman. So I want to say that he's the face. So they might have just cut out the shine completely. Yeah, here goes Powerbomb, cool. If the cutoff is coming, we're about to see it soon. Meaning that Takumi Shinoko is about to cut off Black Tiger 2. And because this might be his shine right here, but this is, doesn't look like a shine. This looks like a heat. 
But talk is about to cut him off if this is indeed the shine. Yeah, spring and breaker, good stuff. I actually don't remember the names to a lot of the moves because I haven't wrestled in so long. But, you know, it never leaves you, man. Like, all my theory. Okay. Yeah, definitely Guerrero is the... They're in the heat. And uh, Black Tiger 2 is a heel. They just they just skipped the shine. Probably because, like I said, they this is, I want to say, the first round of something. Or it's in the beginning of the card and they wanted a quick match, so they just took the shine out. Maybe in another match I'll show you and it'll be like a long shine and I can go more through it. Once I figure out how to record longer videos, but for right now, this is the video it's going to do. Yeah, they're definitely in the heat. He's just beating on this dude, right? So he's doing this and then the crowd, like I said, Taka is their countryman. They want him to overcome this challenge now. So he's created a challenge. And the way he did it in the beginning, he just immediately started out wrestling him. And he's just been beating on him ever since. Watch, he's gonna... I think they made a mistake right there, yeah. But this is uh, this is his hope. He's gonna start doing some uh, some hope spots now. This is what, this is step five. Yeah, but he's gonna get cut off. Yep, so everybody's like, yeah, he can come back now. Taka's about to come back. This, this dude's about to come back now. And this is his little hope spot. But Black Tiger's about to come off. It's, I haven't seen this man. See, there it is. There's the cutoff. Yep, there it is. So that was the hope. That's an example of a hope spot. You do, and you can call this in the match. I haven't really been paying attention to who's calling what. But you could just make up some shit real quick. All right, boom. Another hope, all right? He's gonna, but he doesn't land it. And then he nails that. He's probably gonna get cut off soon. I don't really see, yeah, see, like this is his, this is his, like putting the attention back on him. The, cr the crowd's like, he can do it. He can come back. And of course, Black Tiger too, being a heel is taking his time. He doesn't care about what's going on. And he's just like, I'm taking my time, man. Yeah, see, he's just all about himself and because a face would get right back in there. A face would recover and then get in there because they're a warrior. They, they fight for the people. But when you're a heel, you don't care about that. But he's established himself as a formidable opponent by, up until this point, dominating most of the match. He's had most of the control in the match. We're in the hope now, though. After the hope is going to come the false finishes. So I'm waiting on those, but there was the cutoff. He's, he's back in, in control. Some more hope now. Yeah, they think he could come back and he's either about to cut him off or they're going to start going in. I, I want to say they're going to start going into the false finishes. So they're about to start hitting their big moves. Yep. So this is the first thing that he does. He hits his plancha. Springboard plancha. Yep, yep, yep. Sell, sell, sell. I gotta be honest with you, once you know what you're doing, it's all selling. That's all that it is. If you know what you're supposed to sell and when to sell it and how and uh, the order of it, that's, that's all that it is, man. It's all selling. All right, so there's another semi cutoff. No, the hope spot continues. But these are the false finishes now, though. They're going to start hitting the big moves where you think the match could end. Big move, big move. Yep. Aaron Kanrana, big move, man. Well, actually, it was a Frankenstein, a big move. Yeah, yeah, reversal. He's going to hit a big move now. Nope, he doesn't. Yo, yep, there it is. Possible and nope. Typically, at least in the United States, the referee's count begins to pick up during the uh, the falses. Big move, right? Because they're in the falses. They're, they're trying to end the match now. You saw how it went. Heat. Oh, that's the end, man. Oh, man, he got me. I thought that was the finish. I for sure thought that, that was a dolphin splash. I thought that was it, man. But that's what the falses are about. So you're seeing that. So when you're doing your matches, you can see when, where to put... Those. Imagine they started the match like this, you know? Because sometimes people do stuff like that. I used to do that when I was new. My matches were all climax. It was just big move, big move, big move, big move. It just doesn't make... 
it just sets uh, it's tough to do it like i did it for a while you can do it but it's just that's not how you build a match which is what i'm trying to show you Ooh, big move I'm not gonna get it though nope not spectacular enough to f end, end the match really here we go he's gonna go for another one. Oh wow but he gets cut off so yeah these are the false finishes it's like a bunch of hope it's going back and forth it's a seesaw battle as Vince McMahon used to say boom oof man brain buster no he didn't get him but see how he's kicking out like it's more dramatic because these are the falses because this is the part of the match where you think the match could end at any moment. Go for the tornado DDT. Yep, got it. Oh man, that's it. Yeah, he got him. I mean, he could have fooled me though. So that was, there really wasn't a, a, a comeback. They cut out the comeback and they cut out the, um, the home spot. But they had to because it was a shorter match, but maybe in another match we'll see someone actually do a um, a comeback. And so there, I will say that there they were kind of like, now that I'm thinking about it, they were like in false finishes, false comeback type of thing. But it was really just falses. It was just a bunch of false finishes. They didn't do the, the, the comeback spot, which is like the whole cup where you're like, ah, oh, and the guy comes back. And then you either let the guy fit, take it home and hit hit the home spot and, and end the match, or you do a swerve, and the heel cuts him off one last time. Well, a good swerve would be like uh, the guy hits his finisher. Let's say it's a frog splash. So the guy hits a frog splash, and everybody's like, "It's over." You know what I mean? It's stuff you'll see at WrestleMania or a big show. You do this for a big show where everybody knows that that's his finisher. Like it's a known guy. Like you don't just do this when nobody knows because nobody will know that that's his finisher. But the guy hits his finisher. In this example, a frog splash. He hits the frog splash and he kicks out. Nobody's ever kicked out. Or it's one out of a thousand have kicked out. Like just, it's super, it basically nobody kicks out of this move ever. And the guy kicks out, right? That's a swerve, right? We let the guy go all the way through the home or the comeback or the Hulk up, whatever you want to call it. And then the guy, uh, ends it, but he kicks out, the The opponent kicks out, so that would be a swerve, right? Or the guy goes for it and then somebody comes and interferes or something, but basically he's about to end the match and go for his move because the face is about to culminate his comeback and win now, right? And that's what everybody's waiting for if he did his job. So if there's a swerve, that means he doesn't just hit the move and end it. That does happen. There are a lot of guys with uh, like tra trademark sequences where you know they're about to hit their finisher and then they go straight to it. Like Bret Hart had a, a trademark, has a trademark, you know, he had a trademark sequence. Uh, Shawn Michaels had a trademark sequence or like, you know, you, they hit these moves and you know what's coming. Like Shawn Michaels does the, uh, the kip up to the fucking, he does like a cross body or a flying forearm or something. And then he does uh, a top rope elbow drop. You know that the one goes like this. And then, I don't know, maybe he kips up there, but he does the elbow drop and then he hits, he goes to the corner, hits the, the super kick or the sweet chin or Bret Hart has the um, inverted atomic drop to the clothesline. And then he does the uh, elbow off the second rope and then he goes for the sharpshooter. You know, he tries to pin him after the elbow, but to kick out and then he'll go for the sharpshooter typically after that. I might be screwing it up a little bit. But that's basically, they do that every fucking match. Goldberg has his prelude where he does the fucking um, vertical suplex to the power slam. And then he hits the fucking spear. You know, like people, so many wrestlers have their fucking, their shit that they do, you know, like as part of their comeback. And you know that when they hit that, once they begin that sequence, they're going to end the match. But a swerve would be that happens. And then some guy comes in or the guy kicks out and you're like, oh, I've never gotten this far. The guy always gets pinned, you know? So, I mean, there's stuff you could do there. Like, you could do the same move again, get back to the move again, maybe hit it a third time if you need to, but you just keep getting back to the finisher till finally the guy can't take it anymore and he's dead, you know? Like, he, he gets pinned. Or you hit a new move or you finish the match with a different move. Like, there's all kinds of stuff you could do to swerve people. Swerves are good. Swerves are a lot of fun, honestly. I like to do a swerve and basically every... It's, it's a part of my my seven steps, I actually have eight steps 
And the seventh step is a sword. Like I always put a sword in there. I never just have this clean, or I never had because I don't wrestle anymore, but I never had just this clean finish. It was always like tricky to get there. But I will say in the beginning, I was a lot of climax. Like I was telling you, you didn't want to just hit a bunch of climactic moves if you're building a match, especially when nobody knows you. But I mean, when nobody knows you, it is also fun to just hit a bunch of big moves because I've done that before too. That's a lot of fun. But uh, I don't know. Because it, it ends up being in this, what happens sometimes is you is you hit, have a high climax, uh, a climactic match. And sometimes the people just don't get into it. Like I've seen them, I've had the matches. I used to watch all my matches after I'd have them over and over, you know, to study myself. And sometimes you do that, you do climactic matches and just people just don't get into them and you're just hitting move after move after move. And it's just like, yeah, another big move. Or if you're thinking about uh, in the context of an entire card, maybe they've seen all the moves you hit earlier in the show, like an arm drag or a body slam or a clothesline. And you're hitting those moves and people are just like, yeah, we saw that earlier. You know, there's nothing new about these moves, even though you're doing climactic stuff, maybe a splash maybe a back body drop, but they already saw those earlier. You get what I'm saying? Like, so you're hitting bigger moves, you're hitting high spots, and a bunch of the moves in the high spots are matches from earlier. It's just not as exciting. Or sometimes the crowd just, it doesn't get into the moves because you, you don't build them right. So that's why I'm saying it's not bad to be climactic, but if you know how to build the match, then you can slow build it, slow burn it, and get the, the, crowd, like into an up, the crowd into an uproar. So that's why I think it's better if you're learning for any aspiring pro wrestlers or anybody that's out there that is a pro wrestler, they can, they can, you know, they can chime in too. Like sometimes you need to build a match, especially when nobody knows who the fuck you are. So I'm speaking mostly to the new guys. Hopefully the, the veterans in here can, can chime in as well. So this is good to know to how to build a match. But in this match, like I was saying, they skip the shine and they cut out the, the comeback and the home. They basically just went from the false finishes and then one of the moves he hit it and he ended the match. So that was a good example of a match when you have less time, because of course it was the first round of a multi-man tournament here. So all the initial matches, probably they were all told in the back, like, hey, keep it under seven minutes. Keep it five to eight minutes or some shit like that. The referee was probably in there telling them too how much time they had left. It looked like most of that match was called, honestly. So most of these guys probably just came in, they, they probably don't even speak the same language because I know Eddie Guerrero doesn't speak Japanese. So I don't know if um, his opponent spoke Japan, uh, spoke English or I don't know. But sometimes you have matches where you guys don't speak the same language. Don't speak the same language. You get in the back real quick before you have your match. You figure it out. And then you go out there and you call the rest on, on the fly. Uh, so if they don't speak the same language, there was, they were probably signaling each other. I wasn't really checking for them if they were giving each other signals or maybe the referee was helping them. But... They kept the match short. They cut out three steps in the match, but that was my first match uh, analyses. If there's anything else that I missed, and then uh, one of the thing I want to see is the crowd psychology. So Black Tiger Two wins that match. He beats a hero. So most likely in his next match, whoever's on the other side of the bracket, I'm not looking it up right now, but I'm assuming that on the other side of the bracket, the guy he faced was also another hero that won his match, and Black Tiger is about to either take him out or lose to the hero, but. That's what I'm assuming. It's probably since he won his match and the uh, match is going to determine who he faces next, it's probably a good guy. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's in, uh, important to understand that crowd psychology. I'll get more into it in other matches. Like I said, this is my first breakdown, so I'll get smoother with time. But, uh, you know, give me some feedback. It'll help me make better analyses in the future because I know what you guys want to hear. Maybe I, I didn't say something you wanted to hear about, or maybe you're like, tell me more about that thing right there or whatever. I'll respond to any comments as they come in. And I'm going to get on finishing that seven steps video, uh, hopefully soon. I think I'm going to maybe do it after this video. I have to edit the first half. And once I finish editing that first half, maybe before, I don't know, it, it depends. I have to post this video first, but after I post this video, uh, I'm going to start working on that seven steps video. And I think I'm going to have that up. I hope within the next couple of weeks, maybe within the next few days. And then I'm going to start doing more of these. And then you'll know what I'm talking about when I say this step in this match. Or I don't know, leave in the comments. Do you even want me to make that video? Because I could also just explain the steps by doing more of these analyses. And that means I don't have to edit the... Um, 
the video. And I could just get around to that when I get around to that and do it little by little. But I can knock out these matches all day. Like I could just put on another one and then another one and just edit it up real quick, sync up the videos, and then post another one. And you can learn when I talk about each step during each match, how the steps work. Let me know. It's Catch Canis signing out. Y'all are going to be, one of y'all out there is going to be the greatest of all time. And one day I'm going to start my Fed and I hope somebody comes to me and is like, oh, I used to watch you on YouTube and I want to wrestle for you. I'm like, I'm going to love it, man. I'm going to love it. My Fed, Pro Wrestling Federation is going to be called War Wrestling Alliance Republic. Whenever I get it up and going, I hope to start it in Hawaii because there aren't really any Feds out there and on the big island, maybe. But uh, yeah, uh, I'll keep making these videos. I'll, I'll get to that seven steps when I can. Maybe it'll come out next or maybe I'll get around to it when I get around to it. But I'm going to keep start doing these shorter matches. Once I figure out how to use my computer, I'll start doing longer matches, like 30 minutes. And I'll talk you through the whole match and everything I see. And I hope you, uh, you can learn for anybody out there learning about how to become a professional wrestler. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you explain it to you exactly how to do it with plenty of analysis. I've been looking on YouTube and I don't see anybody out there doing videos, breaking stuff down. It's everybody that has like fan channels, which I'm a fan too, but this will help actual people trying to learn how to actually perfect the craft and become a goat. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.